Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks very much um, for coming along. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Neil Kraut, um, and I'm here today well, from the Centre of Environment. Just to say a few words, really, of introduction, um, I think, um, before handing over to my colleagues who are going to sort of talk a in a little bit more detail about some of our specific courses. The um, main thing I want to do, perhaps, is just sort of say a little bit about why maybe you might like to study the environment, and, and of course, why you would like to come to Nottingham to do that, um, rather than to go to... Um, other institutions which reputedly teach the same sort of subject, but we obviously don't talk about that. Um, so why environment? Well, here's, uh, I'm going to do this by way of some quotes, I think. So this is a fellow called David King, who was the UK's chief scientist, the chief advisor on science matters to the government um, in 2004. He got to do a presentation in the US um, where he said that climate change is the most severe problem that we're facing today, more seriously than, than the threat of terrorism. Obviously, he was run out of town. I hardly said that in Washington, D.C., um, but nevertheless, um, I think that's a point of view which is sort of, if you like, has arrived at the top levels of public policy and of government and, and so on, and is now much more accepted. Um, David Miliband, who was, until yesterday, the Secretary of State for Environment and a host of other things, um, he has been quite prominent, actually, at pushing the whole kind of agenda of uh, sustainability and thinking about how we're going to organise the world in the future. Um, this is just a little bit from one of the speeches he made, in which he said that today we are, well, in order for the world to live at the level of prosperity that we enjoy in this country, we would have to consume three planets worth of resources, but we only have one. So how are we going to manage that as the peoples of India and China start to rise to the same levels of aspiration and sort of uh, material kind of wealth that people enjoy, say, in Western Europe or North America? And of course he goes on to say, well, that's because you know, people are going to want to live that prosperously and that's reasonable and they shouldn't be prevented from doing so, but we'll have to think of a better way to organise things in order to accomplish that. Um, and just for a bit of political balance, um, David Cameron, leader of the uh, Conservative Party, we put UK here because we use these as well sometimes for international kind of things, um, talking in a very similar vein, again on this, this idea of sustainability and really addressing the point that maybe it's not just economic development that we need to think about in terms of public policy and in terms of the way the economy is organised and so on, but on the general well-being of the population and on how sustainable things are and on the sort of environmental consequences of some of our actions. So that's a little bit why environment. It seems to me, uh, I think it's reasonably widely accepted, as I've put the, at the top there, that environment is now very much in the centre of a lot of uh, thinking. It's no longer a sort of fringe activity. I guess probably 20 or so years ago there were ecologists with their beards and maybe a few activists worried about nuclear power and so on, but now this is very much mainstream uh, in business, in industry, in the economy and in government sort of thinking. Try to find ways in which we're going to enable the people, people to live prosperously but sustainably. Um, and if you like, there's going to have to be large numbers of people working in all sorts of subject areas in order to bring that about, both in terms of research, in terms of delivery, in terms of policy. And as I've tried to write here, the environment is not a single subject. Okay, so there is no, we don't run a course called BSC Environment or BA Environment. Um, instead, we have a, a range of uh, different sorts of programs from different disciplines, all of which are relevant to the sort of environmental issues that uh, the world faces. I've listed a few here, and you're going to see some examples um, in a moment. Um, and the whole push here is towards finding this sustainable basis for running things in the future. And that is... <coughs> and certainly will be very much more so in the future, creating all sorts of new opportunities in terms of employment, in terms of uh, the economy and the types of industrial activity that go on. So why consider us some kind of environment option? I think um, it is interesting. It's an interesting area of study. It's a very new, uh, in terms of this, this coherent sort of uh, range of activity, it's, it's quite new with this multidisciplinary aspect, but it doesn't, it's not just because it's interesting, it's also useful. So within any of the programs that you, if you came to study one of our type of environment uh, related programs here at Nottingham, you know, these are bona fide qualifications. So just taking, I'm an environmental scientist, so I contribute to the environmental science program that we have. That is a bona fide applied science degree with proper science content. And you would have all of the sort of core disciplines and transferable skills that you would have in any host of other uh, applied science uh, degrees. So all of those sorts of options remain open to you in exactly the same way as if you were studying other sorts of subjects, but with the added benefit that potentially, if you're interested in the environment, it's an interesting area of application. And of course, as I've already said, there are an ever-increasing range of opportunities and employability. Um, you'll see and hear something about that from my colleagues in shortly. 
Okay, so maybe, maybe, I've convinced you that you should come to you know, study the environment. Why should you come and do it at Nottingham? We have to concede that there are other universities in the UK. Um, we have a very wide range of relevant courses. We're going to give you a flavour of those in a moment. Um, we believe we're an excellent place to study. Um, happily, other people have agreed with that in terms of the various independent assessments and so on. Um, we're a university of the year. I know that because it says so on the entrance sign to the university. Um, we have lots of, obviously, as you'll be aware, there is lots of measuring of university teaching and research, and we get good scores in that. And there is now something called the Top of the League, Top 100 Universities of the World, published by the New York Times, I think. Or, I think it said, we're in the Top 75, 74th, um, just ahead of Lund, which is a very good university in Sweden. And there's lots of good industry links and so on, as you'll see when some of my colleagues go through their um, individual sort of components. A feature of the environment is that it is an interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary sort of area of study. So it's not something where typically one would expect to see one group of people um, delivering all of the relevant material. Um, and in fact, today we're going to have representatives from four schools you know, within the university to say something about their programs. But we have, they are organised into a sort of systematic grouping of the programmes which are relevant to the environment. Across, so if you like, taking account of this interdisciplinary um, sort of aspect. So this is just a, sorry, a screenshot of, of, of our um, environment website, which lists all these different courses, enabling you to kind of cross-compare. So the purpose this afternoon is just, we're not going to give you great detail on each of the individual courses, because you know, we don't want to be here all afternoon. Uh, the plan is really we're going to give you a little bit of an overview and an impression of the different types of course, um, with a view that you can then ask more, more specific questions if you identify the ones that are relevant um, to you. It broadly breaks down, I suppose, into science, engineering, um, geography and um, the built environment as, as the four sort of areas that are uh, represented. Okay, so that's kind of my preamble. What I'm going to do in a moment is just hand over to Roy to talk a little bit about the geography course. One thing we are, we are interested to know, because it's sort of something we're trying to find out a little bit about, is as, as you come into the room now, as it were, perhaps not knowing very much about um, our courses, do you, does anybody have an impression of which sort of course you're actually interested in studying? Are people interested in geography or the engineering side or the science side? I'll tell you what, let's have a show of hands. Is there anybody here sort of initially thinking that what they're interested in is geography? Two very tentative, maybe perhaps geography people. Science? And you're allowed to be interested in more than one, or even all of them. The built environment? And the engineering side? The guy from environmental engineering isn't here yet, so that might be a good thing that nobody put their hand on. Um, Okay, I'm going to stop there. It's just, it's just interesting. I was asked to do that, so we're just interested to see about that. All right, thanks very much for that. I'm going to hand over to Roy, who's in the School of Geography, and we'll tell us something about that. <laughs>